نستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات عمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد فيا عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله الحمد لله all praise belongs to Allah there is no God save him we bear witness that Muhammad is a servant and his messenger may Allah send his salat and salam upon him and his family and all those who follow him until the day of judgment subhanallah this world never leaves the believer in one state Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created life and death to test us. Allah ta'ala says in Surah Al-Mulk, a surah that should be read every night by those who are clinging to the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةِ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا He is the one that created death and life in order to test you which among you are the best in deeds. And Allah Ta'ala says, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّ لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّ إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ مِّن رَبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمَةٌ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُهْتَدُونَ that surely Allah will test you by something of the loss of life and wealth. بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ مِنَ الْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ Allah will test us. But Allah says, بَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ But give glad tidings to those who are صَابِرِينَ Patient. And patience is to hold the self and to respond in that which Allah will be pleased with. To hold the self and respond in a way that Allah will be pleased with you. So if you have a tribulation, you hold yourself and you don't complain. You bear it inwardly by accepting this test from Allah and outwardly by not saying, why is Allah, why is Allah doing this to me? Why is Allah doing this to me? This question is not allowed to be asked from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because indirectly, you're objecting to his wisdom. Indirectly, you're objecting to his wisdom. And Allah Ta'ala says, فَعَالٌ لِمَا يُرِيدٌ Allah is the one that does whatever he wills. Part of being Muslim is that we must acknowledge that Allah is all wise. He is Al-Alim Al-Hakim. He is the one that knows everything and he is also the one who has wisdom absolute wisdom. The believer in what makes us special with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is we're not one-eyed in how we see the world. If you were to have one lens where you only see this world, you're in utter darkness. This is what atheists have. This is what people who don't understand God have. They suffer. And all those who do not believe in a hereafter, who do not believe in the day of judgment, who do not believe in the justice of Allah. They're also left in this pathetic darkness, a darkness that envelops their hearts, a darkness that makes them sad and have no meaning and purpose. And it hurts them and it bothers them. And they drink alcohol and do drugs and stay busy in life because they don't want to bring that reality to their attention. They'll do anything but to hide this pain. Rather, the believer, he has a light from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He understands and she understands that this world is nothing other than a test. 
If I can request there be no talking or being on your phone during khutbah, لا يجوز كلام حين إذا 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 الإمام أقام أمامكم لا يجوز كلام عند جمعة. It is haram to speak during Juma. Not only because it's Juma, because the kalam of the Imam is considered speech of Allah and His Messenger. Okay, so if you're going to come to Juma, please do not speak in the Juma. Okay, or be on your phone. So it's like you're in Salat. May Allah save the Ummah from this jahil to be on your phone during Salat. It's the same during Juma. Please, for God's sake, we got to rise above this ignorance. You see Jews and Christians, they go to their service place, they know what to do. How can we as Muslims not know our fundamentals of our religion? So please understand that. And if you see anyone talking, you're not even allowed to tell them, shh, you lose your Juma as well. Okay? Basic things of etiquette of coming to Juma. So Allah Ta'ala tests us in this. And the believer, he doesn't have one eye, or he sees this world, he has two lens. The lens of dunya and akhirah, and it puts everything in perspective. Right now, we are witnessing genocide of our Palestinian brothers and sisters, and this has been going on for a long time. This is not new. It has been going on decade after decade. And the believers, the one that there are layers of this brothers and sisters. There's a layer where we hate the aggressor, and we should. The actions of aggression we hate, whether it's done by a Muslim, a Kafir, a disbeliever, no matter who does acts of aggression, oppression, we hate that action. We don't hate the individual because they can change. During the time of the Prophet وسلم, Hind, the wife of Abu Sufyan, she was not a Muslim. They killed Sayyidina Hamza in the battle of Uhud. She went and carved, cut him and ate from his organs because she was just so angry and filled with rage over what had occurred in the battle of Badr to her father and her brother, etc. So she was enraged. They did terrible things in some of the battles. Yet the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, when they changed their way and they made tawbah, he didn't hate them. Wahshi, who, who was one of the people that threw the spear to kill Sayyidina Hamza, Ibn, Abi, uh, Ibn Abdul Muttalib, the great uncle of the Prophet Sayyidina Hamza, said the shuhada at the battle of Uhud. He's, ba he's buried there and people visit him until today. When he was killed by him, the Prophet Sayyidina Hamza, when people repented and changed their ways, he still forgave them. But what we hate as believers and what we must hate is oppression, Zulm, uh, sin and killing and murder, all these things we hate no matter who is doing it, no matter who perpetrates it, we hate those actions because Allah told us in the Quran and the Sunnah of our Prophet that those things are wrong. And this has been going on for a long time. And we can come up here, we can condemn them. But there's levels that we as Muslims have to understand. Number one, Anyone here who is not worried or concerned about the state of your brothers and sisters, this is one of the worst signs of you for you as a Muslim. That the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever is not concerned with the affairs of the Muslims is not from amongst us. That if one part of the body hurts, the whole body hurts. The likeness of a believer to another and their mercy and their love and their compassion to one another, it's like one body. How can your leg hurt and you're just fine? You're limping, you're like, I'm fine, it's just this leg is not working. It's going to affect the whole body. When you have a headache, it affects your whole body. I remember last night I had a massive headache. It affected everything else. And that's how we are as an ummah. We're affected deeply about what's going on. But at the same time, the question arises as to what do we do? And the first thing every Muslim should understand is to have care and concern. Secondly, to make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tubu ila Allah jami'an ayyuhal mu'minuna la'allakum tuflihun. Turn to Allah, all of you, communally, in order that we are successful. We need to repent as an ummah, individually, as a family, as a house, and as an ummah, as a nation as a whole. During the time of the companions, they didn't fall into Allah giving the kuffar away over the believers. Because Allah says in the Quran that He has not given a sabil, a path of a mujrim, of a criminal, 
over the believers. In Tansurullah and Surukum, Muslims understood that if you fulfill the conditions of what Allah has put upon you, Allah will never give a kafir way over you. Abada. In my country, Afghanistan, how many years were the Russians in there trying to fight people that had rocks and a few other things, throwing it at their tanks? How many years did the US try and others and they failed? And it showed the entire world, it's not armies that defeat people. It's not technology. It is not, you know, having these things are all delusions and we witnessed it. We witnessed it in Afghanistan. We witnessed it over and in our history. We witnessed this as well in the Battle of Badr, where it's 313 or 14 against over a thousand heavily equipped. But what we don't understand is when you, when we as an ummah get our act right, Allah will remove oppression, will remove the transgressors off the face of the planet. When we get our act right as an ummah, we don't have our act right as an ummah. We don't have our right, act right even in our communities. This person's black, this person's white. This person's Pakistani, this person's Arab. This person's Salafi, this person's Sufi. This person's Shia, this person's Sunni. You think it was like that during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Kalla, never. They knew who their leader was. The one who an angel directly speaks to. The one who is absolutely protected from all mistake and error. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi never said anything wrong. The Prophet did nothing exited his blessed mouth except haq. And then a generation came after him. Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sayyidina Omar and Sayyidina Uthman and Sayyidina Ali. They came up to Sayyidina Ali and said, why did all the problems start when you and Uthman came in power? How come we didn't have these issues with Abu Bakr and Omar? What did he say to them? He said, Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Omar had people like me and Uthman under him, under them. We have people like you under us. What is the Ummah now under? We can criticize all these pathetic Arab leaders and others, but where did they come from? From the masses. You get rid of one, another one comes worse than that. Where is Iraq now after Saddam Hussein? Where is Afghanistan? Where is all our countries? Where is Syria? Yes, aggression occurs, Zalimun, Mujrimun. Look at the outcome though. Wal fitna tu ashaddu min al qatl. Fitna is worse than killing itself. Civil strife. People in Syria were eating cats, eating animals off the street because there were no food. And yes, it's allowed to eat a cat even in the Maliki school. It's makro, it's not haram. But that's what it sadly came to. Where was the other Arab countries? We have countries of people that have so much money, they don't know what to do with that money. You think that money is good for them? Some of them had 24 karat gold toilets. Some of the Arabs today, and this is what the Prophet says, I'm feared for them. They have so much money. They're in the worst ghafla of all. Their brothers and sisters are dying from no food and water. And these guys are driving in million dollar calls and million dollar penthouses and all this haram. They're already in hell. They don't need to wait for the hereafter. Because when you find yourself to be led by Allah to do whatever you want in your transgression, and you think you can get away, the mercy is when Allah tribulates you in this world to wake you up. But no, when Allah lets you go and go and go, and then you die, what state do you think you're going to die? You think it's going to be easy to just die with faith? Shaitan comes at the last lahda, the last moments of a person's life and tries to put doubt in their heart about the faith. Who strengthens you? You It is Allah that allows you to protect your faith. Faith we're not concerned about because somehow we think we own our faith. Wallahi, we don't own anything of our faith. Faith is instantly created in the heart by Allah. Just like every single atom doesn't move around because of gravity, because of physics. Allah Ta'ala Himself is causing both the sabab and the deed. He is the one that causes the cause and what it's doing, the effect. Allah is doing it all. 
And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He talks up to Bani Israel, min ali fir'aun, when Allah ta'ala talked to the Bani Israel that He saved you from Pharaoh, who used to kill your children and spare your women, He says, That was a big bala and a tribulation from your Lord. Mirrabbikum, from Allah. They didn't blame Fir'aun. And that's why you gotta understand in Islam the layers. There's a layer of responsibility that relates to us and our action. We hate the criminal, we hate the aggression, we stand up, we do what we can to help them. That's one layer, that's one dimension. The next dimension is to understand things in a bigger picture that no one other than Allah creates. No one other than Allah raises. Allah is the one that raises people, Allah is the one that obeys them. Why are we a defeated ummah? Why are we in our age, we've raised to such a cowardly level, the kuffar can do whatever they want and no one can rise to them? This is where we're at. This is the Isa that's left. Even one of the worst caliphs, he was drinking wine. Somebody took a woman off the street. She said, call to him and tell him they took me. He put his wine down, he sent an army. He said, send him a message. I'll send an army from here to his very doors until he returns out. Even in those worst times, we had some Isa. And it's a very simple thing that they did to us in back in the 1920s and the generation after when the Ottomans were defeated, when there's no Khalifa on earth. And there are groups that just go around. We need a Khalifa, we need a Khalifa. In what state? In what state? What pathetic state are we in to get a leader? What state? We don't have any state with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't know our religion. We don't know what we're supposed to learn. We make dua, we don't even know the adab of dua. What are we doing? We have to fix ourselves. The one speaking before you needs more help than any of you. We need to rectify our affair. Once we rectify our affair, we're praying five times a day, fasting on Ramadan, we're learning our religion, we care and concern for our ummah, and we unite the ummah. Unite the ummah. No more you're Arab and you're this and that. They went to Salman and Farsi, they said, who are you the son of? I wanna know, are you Qurayshi? Are you from Bani Makhzum? Who are you? He said, Ana ibn al-Islam. I am the son of Islam. Ana ibn al-Islam. And the Prophet said, Salman minna min ahl al-bayt. Salman is from us, from the family of the Messenger of Allah. Ahl al-bayt. You know what honor that is? You know what sharaf there is? Ahl al-bayt are the best of all people. They're from the family of the Prophet And he received that as an honor, even though by blood he's not related to the Prophet Where's our concern today? Our concern is in money. Getting a degree, marrying a nice sister for you brothers, getting a nice job, living life. You didn't anticipate a disruption in your life. If all of us sitting right here thinking, I'm gonna do this at 30 and this at 40, let me tell you something, you're in utter delusion. You're in utter delusion. The next hour is not promised to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How are you planning when you're 30 and 40? With all this madness going around, what if a massive war breaks out? What's, what, what happened to your plans? Your plan has to be one plan. The pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And preparing your answer on the day of judgment. While people were dying, you're in the clubs. While people were dying, you're out busying and drinking alcohol and spending your nights in sin. What tribulation are you in? You think those people in Gaza are in tribulation? They're Man ahabb Allah, whoever Allah loves, either ahabb Allahul qawm, when Allah loves the people, He gives them tribulation. Shuhada after shuhada. One after another. Every shaheed is given 70 people on the day of judgment. Plus, how many people there in Gaza are all shuhada? They're all in heaven. Finally, they're out of their prison. They're in Jannah. قَتْلَاكُمْ فِي النَّارِ وَقَتْلَانُ فِي الْجَنَّةِ Our, our dead are in heaven, your dead are in hell. That's what Sayyidina Rasulullah told Sayyidina Umar to say to the kuffar. So what loss is there? No loss to us. 
The loss is on every one of us sitting here doing absolutely nothing. The least of which we can do is cry for them, make dua for them. It's not just them, it's Muslims all over the world, like I said. It's Muslims in Afghanistan that died from the, thousands died from a recent earthquake. It's our Muslim brethren in Yemen, our brothers and sisters that have been dying in Yemen for a long time. And what is our people doing? Prancing around, wasting billions of dollars. Richest people in the world, Muslim. What good is in them? Absolutely nothing. This is why when the Prophet ﷺ told us of the signs of the end of time, the companions wondered, how is this all going to happen? When the kuffar can sit around us like a plate and eat whatever they want, and we have no izzah, and our masajid will be built high, our minarets will all be decked down, people make dua, and Allah will not answer anybody's dua. And the ulama of that time, they're the asal of all fitna. From them fitna emerges and to them it returns. These are the signs of the end of time. What were we told? Are we few? He said, Bal antum kathir. You are a lot. But like you are like the Zabad al Baha. You're like the foam, the scum of the ocean. There's no quality in us anymore. One Sahaba, if they are to walk in this room, everything changes. One companion, let alone hundreds and thousands of companions, who went and they performed miracles. They walked on water. Forests grew things for them. Animals spoke to them. Why? Because they had it right. When we get it right, and we will, do not lose hope. Do not lose hope. We're not an ummah that loses hope. Allah's with us. But this is purification for all of us, not just our brothers and sisters there that are being honored and blessed, and there will always be a great people among them, but for all of us, this is a test. So don't lose hope. Do your part. The affair is not in your control nor your hands, but your responsibility is in your hands. For our own children, our own families, living in the lands of the kuffar, living in the lands of the kuffar, adopting their systems, adopting their methodology of how you should think, how you should speak, what you should condemn, what you should not condemn. If Sayyidina Abu Bakr or Omar or somebody came in, how do we explain to them right and wrong? Sayyidina Omar would look at us and say, what did you say? al haq is what Allah and His Messenger have said. Batil is what Allah and His Messenger said. Now what do you got to say? People do this and people do that and people live like this. What would he say? He'll say, do you people believe in Allah in His last day? Have you people abandoned your faith? Where are you? What will we say? If we can't say, have an answer for Sayyidina Omar, how are we going to look at Rasulullah on the Day of Judgment? How? And how are we going to stand in the presence of Allah? You do that now by waking up for God's sake. Waking up to see what world you live in. Stop committing sins by day and night. Stop looking at the haram. Stop going to parties. Stop your life before Allah seizes all of us. Turn to Allah and say, I hear and I obey. Sami'na wa ata'na. Learn the greatness of your messenger. Learn the greatness of this religion. And don't be part of the problem. Allah will raise this ummah beyond your imagination. The kuffar have no power. The kuffar are already deleted and already defeated. It's a matter of time. On the tongue of the one who spoke the truth, Sadaqa Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, all things will occur exactly as he told us. But in his description, which group do you want to be from? Losers? or winners, there's no in between. You wanna be from the winners or you wanna be from the losers. This is our choice. As for our brethren who are all shuhada, may Allah accept them and bless them, they're from the winners. Absolutely from the winners. All of our brothers and sisters that die in an earthquake, in a fire, in drowning, this is all mount shaheed they're all shuhada. But how do we live and how do we die? Whatever your hawa takes you. Marry some woman who's not even a Muslim. Have children with her, live life. You're a corporate executive, etc., etc. And then the end of your life, you die, and Fusa come to your janazah, they don't even know how to pray. You didn't know how to pray, and now who's praying over you? That's why when someone righteous dies, look how many people show up to janazah of a sheikh, of an alim, of somebody great. That matters. It matters who prays over you. It matters how you're accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah rectify the ummah. 
May Allah cause this ummah to wake up off of his ghafla. May Allah Ta'ala make us true believers that give victory to his religion, and so thereby he gives us victory. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa al-aqibatu al-muttaqeen wa salatu wa salam ala sayyid al-awwaleena wa al-akhileen nabiyya al-rahma wa imam al-huda wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. May Allah accept all of us amongst those that are trying to rectify the affairs of the ummah. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات المسلمين والمسلمات على حياة منهم ونموات إنك أنت سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين والذر الشرك والمشركين يا رب العالمين اللهم عليك هؤلاء الظالمون اللهم خذهم يا الله اللهم دمر أعداء الدين اللهم دمر ديارهم وشدد شملهم اللهم انصر إخواننا المستضعفين في فلسطين وفي كل مكان يا رب العالمين Oh Allah, help our brothers and sisters and grant them victory and assistance, Ya Rabb, where they're suffering, especially in Palestine, Ya Allah. Give them nasr and give them quick victory and a way out of their digression and their oppression and their hardship, Ya Allah. Allah, accept those who pass away from him amongst the being amongst the shuhada. Allah, rectify our affair. Allah, make us to, to have concern for the ummah. Allah, help us to rectify the affairs of the ummah. Allah, grant us knowledge that will save us in the day of judgment. Allah, do not let us die in any state other than a state that you're well pleased with us, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allah, take us out of our ghafla. Allah, take us out of our sin. Allah, take us out of the oceans of our hawa and our caprice and our desires, Ya Allah. Allah, grant this ummah knowledge. Allah, guide this ummah. Allah, help this ummah. Allah, was the concern of the Prophet ﷺ for this ummah. Allahumma, Ya Allah. أصلح حالنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار. Oh Allah, forgive our mothers and fathers and grandparents and all of the Muslims from the day of the first of the Muslims until the last. Allah, make our graves a garden from the gardens of paradise. Don't take us to account for all this treachery and the wrongs that we've all committed. Allah, forgive us and them. Amin ya Rabbil Alamin. Wa sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wa alaihi wasallam. Jamaa'in. Aqim al-Sawm.